There is no standardization of the terminology yet, although most of our customers and many of our organizations, or many of the organizations that show up at our product line workshops and conferences seem to be standardizing on the terminology on the left here. So they talk in terms of product line and core assets and core asset development and product development. But other organizations, you may hear them talk in terms of a product family rather than a product line. Our European colleagues, for example, tend to use the term product family more than product line. And some organizations regard core assets as a platform and a particular product then as a customization of the platform. Large organizations that are organized into multiple business units often have particular product lines associated with those business unit, and so they use the term business unit and product line more or less interchangeably. And then finally, from some of the earlier work done on strategic reuse, terms like domain engineering, where you create a set of reusable artifacts within a particular domain of expertise and follow that up with what's called an application engineering process to take those reusable artifacts and turn out products within that domain. Those terms are largely equivalent to what we would now call core asset development and uh, product development. So that's our quick introduction to the concepts and the terminology behind uh, software product lines. So from now on, we'll be moving into more detail about what these mean and what kinds of practices you would actually institute in an organization. Any um, questions or comments before we take a break? Peter. Yes, I, the, the example you gave before with your Dell computer, mm -hmm. I was immediately thinking of building like a generic application that can handle all the cases just by itself, which would be like, for me, like a natural approach to it, like having one architecture, one application that can handle it all. And it's, it's like it, it must have, of course, the architecture that can handle all, all the different uh, configurations. Handle all these different variants. And it must have the components, otherwise it won't be running at all. And there must be some idea of how to adopt it to a special situation, some kind of configuration. I wonder what is the, um, what are the criteria to say, well, I'm, I'm building this generic application that I can take just as it is with, a, with a, some kind of configuration to, to one customer or having an approach to building a, a product line. Well, what, what you are describing sounds like a highly configurable single asset, yeah. like an architecture. But it's not the same as creating a line of products from a set of artifacts that goes beyond the architecture. So for a lot of organizations that can do what you were saying, they, they basically they don't need to go to the expense and the time of creating an entire line of products or an entire core asset base if you can get by with a single highly configurable tailorable application that can serve the needs of the markets you're going after. So if it's possible to satisfy my needs with this kind of approach is fine. Then go for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Raul. How these kind of approaches adapt to companies that are that work based on like a service kind of approach, in which they have like individual projects based upon client, and then they move to another client, and they don't have like a single product kind of mindset, where, where they have people working on this version, but they also have people thinking of the previous, the next versions on on other products that are similar to the same product that we're building here. So that doesn't require any cultural change in the middle, or. Oh, it may. I mean, it, you're still trying to establish, uh, in a service-based organization, you're still trying to establish a reuse mindset in the sense that people are going to be reusing these services across the organization. You're still going to need to have to come up with a business justification 
for why you are creating these services and why the organization wants to be a service-based organization. And you're going to have to spend some money setting up the supporting infrastructure. So a lot of the, the technological approach and a lot of the management and governance issues that you run into in a service-based organization are exactly the kinds of things you run into in a product line organization. So even if your ultimate goal is not to create products but to create a set of services, a lot of the practices and the process discipline of software product lines are still applicable in a service context.